All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a new year, 2017, and this is a new setup video. So here we go. What's new on my kayak? Let me see. How about we just go through the whole kayak like y'all have never seen me do a setup video before. We'll start with my rods. I now have Outcast rods and fishing gear. These are both my Texas Slam rods. I've also got a couple of what they call the Mamba series. This is the new and improved version of the Texas Slam. This is the old and awesome. So yeah, totally sweet. I highly recommend people going and checking out Outcast Rods. And you can check it out at outcastrods.com. I got shirts, hats, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, here's my little life jacket. I should wear this more, but I don't because I'm highly irresponsible. But it's just a old Stearns, you know, it's got a little like tackle pocket, whatever you want to call it. This is a throwable PFD. I use this as my seat. This is a magnet. You can see it just holds my lures that I'm not using at the, at the moment. This is my old rusty bait knife. Just sharpen it about once a month or so and it's good to go. I try to keep a couple of popping corks, big and small, rattling around in here just in case. I mean, worst case scenario, you gotta catch fish, pull out the popping cork. Here's my old junkie stringer. This is just a cast net and a little bait bucket. I've been using lures all day. Haven't touched bait, but just in case, I like to keep that stuff with me. Okay, I've been using a top water. For reels, I've got Abu Garcia Black Max 20 on both of my rods. I like them because they're 20 bucks. And hey, that's hard to beat. Check it out. For all my sight casting people out there, this is from Live Gear, the same people who make Action Hat. You just clip it on down here, and when you're ready to, to do some sight casting, you can just clip your paddle in, just like that. Can y'all see that? And it holds your paddle while you flip over that, rest, that redfish. No problem. My net, my net is it's like 25 to 30 bucks on Amazon. It comes with a long handle and I just cut the handle down. And then I use a screw to keep it in place. It did have that little thumb button on there so you could push the handle in. I don't need that. My bump board, I get a lot of questions about my bump board. It's also my cutting board, but seriously, look, it's simple. I bought this piece from Walmart or any other place that sells you know, Academy, whatever, just some place that sells that uh, aluminum bump board. And then this stuff right here is like, like base, like baseboard, like, uh, like the floor molding around your house. It's made out of like a expanded PVC foam. So even though it's got aluminum on there and stainless steel and all this other stuff, it floats. All you gotta do is pick it up out of the water when it falls off the boat. And let me tell you people, if you just buy an aluminum bump board, it will fall off the boat and it will go to the bottom. And unless you're in super shallow water, you can kiss that $20 goodbye. Actually, some of them are up to 40 bucks. So, I mean, okay, so moving back here, we've got the crate. I got a bunch of gulps and Nortons and extra jig heads and stuff in there. Oh, I passed up on this right here. I forgot about this. This is my Slayer Ink grab bag, okay? I put all different colors in here just so I've got a nice assortment in one bag and I keep it right here next to me or in my pocket. This is my, what I call my primary box. You see in here, I got a top water with super rusty hooks, shrimp lures. I got that trout support lure already rigged up, ready to go. This is a big old marker 54. These are Slayer Ink lures. These are just some old generic shrimp Slayer ink. Look, even if you don't use Slayer ink paddle tails, you got to get these jig heads because they are the bomb. The best jig heads ever. So, yeah, moving back here, I've got my Bruce Claw anchor. Again, highly, highly recommended. I quit using a stakeout stick when I started using this thing because it's so good. It just, I mean, it stops you. Like I said before, I'm pretty sure I said it before, if you're going to use a Bruce Claw anchor, make sure your anchor points are nice and secure because it will rip stuff out of your kayak if you got it like a couple of little phillips screws 
it will rip them out i promise you maybe not the first time you use it but eventually it will rip them out so this is just to clean my lenses i like to keep a whole bunch of extra waters in here look this is lunch right here people i don't like to eat this but just in case i get hungry it's really nice to have some chicken salad snack on the run they're pretty good these are just my secondary boxes i try not to get into those very often i got one of them that's mainly for offshore stuff one of them is mainly for like big trout all right you talk me into it i'll pull them out let's see what this one is this one is my assorted i've got salt water fresh water see i got a top water plug in here some more like a chicken boy uh old style marker 54 shrimp i got a bugs still in the package these are supposed to be awesome lures people I can't speak for them because I haven't used them yet, but everybody I talk to that's used them says they're awesome. These are my favorite all-time bass spinner baits right here. Just in case I go bass fishing, I like to keep them in there. Some, you know, leaders. This is my super long measuring tape, just in case my bump board. My bump board's 40 inches. This goes up to, I believe, 80 inches. This is my 60 inch. So 20 inches lower than that. And of course it just, you know, it's like a sewing thing. It's supposed to pull out. It's probably all seized up. Let's see. I think you push this button and hey, there it goes. It works. See, there you go. So that's what's in that box. Let's move on to the next box. The next box contains, looks like, Top waters, that's some split weights. Look at that old chicken boy lure right there. He's seen better days. Let's see, this is a good old marker 54 swim bait. Some big top water plugs, a couple of small hooks, circle hooks. You get the idea, right? Okay, let's see what's in this last box. And I put styrofoam at the bottom of this because everything was getting wet on the bottom. So now that's no longer a problem. Here is the last box and it's just got more, you know, this is like big trout stuff here. Corkies and yeah, good stuff. Some more uh, trout support lures. This one's already rigged up, ready to go. Also a white one. Look at this, this is the prototype trout support lures. Had the eye, Tobin put eyeballs on this one. I like it. I'm trying to save it because I don't want to waste it. Okay, so that's the tackle. This is an extra neck buff because I know if you fish a lot, you're gonna get a half a mile away from your truck or a mile away from your truck and you're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna be a redneck at the end of the day today because I forgot my neck buff. And you're gonna get a burned neck. Well, not me, I got extra. And just in case you gotta poop while you're out there on the water, toilet paper, gotta have toilet paper, right? And I hope to never have to use that, but just in case, it's nice to know it's there. Here is an old flashlight that I'm sure does not work anymore. It does not work anymore. I need to get that out of my boat. Okay, so let's load this stuff back up in here. I usually keep that right on top of there. Keep my hat in there. Keep this kind of stuffed over here in that top corner. Oh, and on my anchor, here's my anchor line, just so everybody can see how it works. I only pay out about four foot of anchor line here. That's because I'm never in water that's more than about two foot deep. So I don't want 30 foot of anchor line out. But just in case I get in water that's deep, I've got plenty of anchor line on this, just a fishing uh, line spool, mono spool. But I've got about, I think it's 30 or 40 feet of paracord on this thing. So if I ever need to, I've got plenty of anchor line. But like I say, I rarely get in water deep enough to need an anchor. Or they need a long anchor line. Okay, so that brings us to the rudder. The rudder on this thing, $30 off Amazon. I've got it spring loaded, that's why it wants to snap back down. Oh, I guess I'll stick these in that side pocket. I don't know if I open that box back up. So, yeah, this right here is what I use to pull it up or put it down. It is a rudder in the sense that I can steer my kayak with it from right there. That that ball up there 
this line goes through here around this pulley around this pulley down and around that anchor cleat and then all the way back to here so it makes a big loop and in the middle of that big loop is this and i can you know left and right steer it back and forth but because i'm not using in a sail and i don't want to steer it i put this on which is just a piece of aluminum that bolts into here and it bolts into there and that keeps it from turning because i was having a problem with it wanting to turn on its on so there we go people i believe the only other new modifications i have is this and i put this on here so i can troll for trout because when i put my when i put my rod in here and i troll my paddles will catch my line over here it clears and then my paddle does not catch the line so it works much better i recommend everybody get a pair of these they don't have to be this brand or anything it's just aluminum pliers carbide cutters for cutting anything braid hell i use this to crack open hermit crab shells when i need a little crab to catch a black drum or something but these have been in my boat for well over a year going on two years you can see they still spring back i don't wash them i just rinse them off every once in a while you know when i get home every once in a while i'll spray everything down good enough this magnet i talked about at the very first check out this is one of marker 54's little little tiny shrimp lures but this magnet is a phone holder look i'll pull my phone out and i'll stick my phone to it so you can see but it's made to be a phone holder for your car see <laughs> and i had an extra one so i was like hey that'll be a nice lure holder and when i get home i just grab all my lures off there that i use for the day and take them in rinse them off throw them in the box and they're ready for the next trip so i put this camera up here it looks like it's turned on i put this camera up here and i've I filmed with it a little bit, but not much, mainly because it's hard to get up here and turn it on and off and start the recording and stop the recording, but it works great. Now, with all that being said, I do want to make the disclaimer that I get these rods for free from Outcast, And like I said before, I highly suggest y'all go and check it out. He's one of the guys that makes me doing this possible. And Marker, 50, Marker 54 is another one. I get those for free. I get my Slayer Ink for free. But let me tell you this, people. I get this stuff for free, but if I'm using it in front of the camera, it's because it really works. I don't get paid to show y'all any of this stuff. I just get stuff for free. And in the sense of, you know, using good gear and knowing what gear is good and yada, 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 I try it out when I get it for free. And if I don't like it, I don't make a video about it. A lot of times I'll send it back to the people. Oh, I just got to hit right there. I'll send it back to the people or I'll, you know, I'll just forget about it. I'll just stick it in a drawer somewhere and never use it again. And it's happened with several products. So I don't want people to start thinking that I'm some kind of a shill. I do like getting free stuff, especially when that free stuff is quality stuff that I would buy anyway if I could afford it or if I could, you know, get it past my wife, which is usually the big obstacle. But yeah, I'm still using the same paddle. The only thing changed with my paddle, it's still an old Warner Skagit hooked. I put my Outcast rod sticker on here, and I put my Slayer Ink Lure sticker on this side because there's some awesome companies, people, and I really do support them. With all that being said, one more company I want to touch base with, Trout Support. I watch the Trout Support DVDs, and honestly, people, that is what gives me an edge when it comes to knowing where to go and catch fish, like having an idea of, hey, where do I want to go today? If you watch trout support DVDs, they will give you the knowledge. If you're, if you're a brand new fisherman and you watch trout support DVDs, you've probably already got more knowledge from sitting there and watching a couple of hours on a DVD than guys who have been out here fishing in the bay for five or 10 years. I'm not kidding at all. It's basically condensed expert knowledge in a easy to use, easy to learn from package. I recommend to everybody, they're not expensive. You know, in, in the grand scheme of what fishing gear costs, 
the trout support DVDs are definitely some of the best money you're going to spend on fishing if this is the kind of fishing you want to do redfish trout he's got it dialed in he's got people who have it dialed in who give him a heads up on their information it's just definitely worth it highly highly recommend checking out the trout support dvds and again i got my trout support i got my redfish shallow water trout dvds and our dvd and i got my uh trophy my trophy speckle trout dvd for free so just wanted to give you all the disclaimer there that i did get the stuff for free but again it's definitely worth it and if i didn't get it for free i would most likely have already bought it myself so i hope this was a good setup video i'm going to go catch some more specs have a nice day